that violate the EU rules. Maybe that part of the House could have the courtesy to hear me out. Okay? Now, Selmergate, Selmergate destroys all the credibility of the European Union as a champion of integrity and transparency in public administration. At times when public trust in the European is low, this is devastating, Mr. Oettinger. And the fact that the Commission remains deaf until the day of today to criticism shows how disconnected it is from reality. So, in conclusion, the Commission will have to choose what is more important, the career of Mr. Selmayr or the credibility of the European Union. Because the appointment of Mr. Selmayr was a grave error and it must be corrected. And that is a precondition for our continued support for this Commission. Thank you very much, Mr. Thank you very much, Ms. Nvelt. Now, Mr. Philippe Lambert on behalf of the Greens. Thank you, President. Colleagues, today we are seeing increasing um, hostility towards the European project. What should we um, expect from the Commission? They have to reconnect with society's needs. They have to be open to uh, diversity of approach and all types of economy. They have to come out of their bunkers uh, that they've closed themselves in on uh, day after day. As uh, Maria Montessori said, uh, we have to um, uh, ensure that the Commission is, um, uh, represents excellence. Nobody is questioning the um, talent or the abilities of the person in question, of Mr. Selmayr. However, uh, we have to remember that he is a party man above all. Martin Selmayr is moving uh, forward with authoritarian centralization. He wants uh, civil servants to obey rather than be uh, creative. The objective is just to have one line, just to see uh, one face, and that be his. Thank you very much. For Gui, Mr. De Jong. Thank you very much, Chairman. I have to say that I'm extremely disappointed at what Mr. Oettinger has just told us in a couple of minutes. We're being treated like children. That we're, it's like we're whinging about something that we're supposed to know, namely that the Commission does everything openly. Whereas the truth is that everything stinks when it comes to this appointment. It's all been done behind closed doors. The second appointment, Secretary General, how can it be that the Commission was surprised that Mr. Selmayr was proposed as Secretary General. Don't treat us as children. The same happened with Mr. Katainen, who also told us that he would told us what, he'd tell us what friendship was when he went to have a, a, a glass of wine with Mr. Barbarossa. He wasn't in any way a lobbyist, but this is the real truth. Mr. Barbarossa had promised that there would be no lobbyism. That was not maintained. So, and if that, had, if he had not stick to that, we'd have to do something about Mr. Barroso. And this is why we put this subject on the agenda. We don't want to be treated like children. I really felt that. Uh, Past weekend, we were back in the Santerre Commission 1999, a problem of integrity, and uh, the problem was swept under the carpet, and you know that everything was done. And if we're going to have the same problem, if we have this arrogant uh, attitude from uh, the Juncker Commission, when we have the inquiry by the Budgetary Control Committee, we want all the facts on the table. Thank you. Thank you, EFDD, Mr. Farage.
The fast track appointment of Martin Selmayr to a €20,000 a, job, a month job uh, done without any openness, without any transparency. In fact, his photograph was on the European Commission website before the meeting even took place. So well done on that score. Now, what you've done, I think, is to bring a bit more light onto the European Commission. I want the citizens to know that the European Commission is the government of Europe. It is unelectable. We can't vote for them, we can't remove them, and yet they have the sole right to make law. And people need to understand how their money is being spent. This is, this is Juncker's favourite bureaucrat, a fanatic who is now the most powerful bureaucrat in the world, and all of it done without an open procedure. You've done the peoples of Europe a great service. It is the perfect stitch-up. It smacks of nepotism, unaccountable government, abuse of public funds. Thank God the UK is leaving. Dziękuję bardzo. Jako następny mówca pan Olaf Stuger. Thank you very much. Olaf Stuger. Dank u wel. Voorzitter, ik ben geschokt. Thank you very much, Chairman. I'm shocked, but not by the, the employment procedure of Martin, of Martin Selmayr, but rather the fact that people are not trusting Mr. Juncker. Don't we know Mr. Juncker as a true and true uh, trustful person, uh, somebody you can trust to steer the ship, somebody who puts himself last and the European citizen first. He is uh, the idol for a number of world leaders and now he is uh, having mud slung at him. And I can't accept it. I think we should have the right procedure. I would suggest that the European elections next year should be cancelled and uh, Mr. Juncker should be given the power to appoint members of the European Parliament on a personal basis. Thank you. Dziękuję bardzo. Pan Bruno Golnisz jako poseł niezrzeszony. Bardzo. Thank you very much. Mr. Golnisz. Monsieur Tinger, vous nous prenez vraiment. You know, Mr. Tinger, you really think we are children, don't you? Not responding to the questions about the appointment of Mr. Martin Zellner appointed just overnight Deputy Secretary General, then Secretary General. You know, you, you, you said they, they really held lengthy meetings. On the 21st of February, the meeting began at half past nine in the morning, and the uh, announcement by the press, uh, the release went out uh, early in the morning for a 10.30 meeting. I don't know. If there hadn't been any candidates, then this would have been an illegal appointment anyway. We would have had a male candidate and a female candidate. So Clara Martinez Alberola was the person who was called in, deputy uh, collaborator uh, working with Mr. Zellmeyer. She, she actually agreed to withdraw. I'm sure she was handsomely rewarded for that, to leave the place and leave the pave the way for Mr. Zellmeyer. I mean, what's legal about this? I don't know. The final question, however, which is very important, is how come the 27 commissioners were so kindly disposed towards this <laughs> procedure? Is it because Mr. Zellmeyer suggested that they their expenses for former commissioners be increased um, from 40% to 67% of the basic salary? Is it because he promised all the commissioners, all the former commissioners, that they would have an office in the commission, that they would have a chauffeur-driven car, two assistants, uh, so that they would end up getting double or triple, treble what they get at the moment? These are the kind of questions that we need answers to. Dziękuję bardzo. Przechodzimy do wystąpień indywidualnych. Thank you very much. We go on to individual speeches. Mr. Montenesco. Thank you, President. Um, obviously, the President of Secretary General of the Commission is an extremely important one. It must um, assure the well functioning of all services, the balance, um, the exchange of information between general directorates, exchange uh, of information with Parliament, and um, more importantly, the implementation of uh, the political decisions of the College of Commissioners without, of course, um, um, 
straying too far from those decisions. Uh, that civil servant must not have uh, opinions, but rather implement those decisions as they are. That is why I believe um, the procedure, the appointment procedure, must be very transparent, and it must encourage the participation of a large number of um, civil servants, of functionaries, so that the best person may be chosen for the position. It is the only way uh, the Commission can um, prove its uh, credibility. I believe that the intervention of uh, the Budgetary Control Committee is uh, very welcome in this case. Thank you. Thank you very much. Ms. Pervange Perez. Merci, Monsieur le Président. Thank you, President. Vice President, do I have to read Article 4 of the Statutes of uh, Civil Servants in Europe? Any vacancy brought to the knowledge of uh, the staff once the uh, appointing uh, authority decides that uh, they have to replace the um, fill this vacancy. Why, Con contrary to what you told us today, was the procedure not followed? Why did Mrs. Clara Martinez withdraw her candidature before uh, the interview, before a hearing? Where do we have the hearing of a male and female candidate. Why were people not informed in due time? Vice President, you are so uh, keen to ensure the rules are respected and abided by. How could you be happy with this clear violation of the spirit and letter of the law? How could you take the risk of taking on this commission that Mr. Juncker wanted to be a commission of last resort, which also gives rise to Eurosceptical debates within its ranks, whether it's where we want it to be, the guardian of the treaties. How can you violent, violate the spirit of the institutions so that people who are working there should be serving the citizens and not helping themselves? We should be doing this in an exemplary manny, manner here. Uh, and we should ma ensure that we are very vigilant with regard to our own institutions. But, Mr. Vice President, you were saying uh, these untruths, these counter-truths, whatever the qualifications of Mr. Zellmeyer, he didn't have the legal qualifications in terms of employment for the post, and you wanting to promote women by asking the female Deputy Vice Secretary General to withdraw her candidacy is hardly respecting the desire to promote gender equality. And Peter van Dalen. Thank you very much. Uh, Peter van Dalen. Next. Voorzitter. Chairman, Brussels has a very negative uh, taste for a lot of citizens. And this is exactly what the President Commission has done. He's given his friend Selmayr a good job. Not much seems to have changed. Heinrich Heine says is quite right. It's an old tale, but it keeps being repeated. Mr. Juncker keeps accusing it the different member states of not being clear. He's doing exactly the same. He keeps saying that everything has been done religiously according to the rules. We've had a very simplistic answer from Wirtinger, and that shows that the Commission has no political antenna. Um, Mr. Selmayr is now in office. We've got a big problem. We know that this is not decent. So we should have a proper procedure. Only in that way can we slightly limit the damage. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you, President. Viva Commissar Oettinger. First of all, we should ask where is President Juncker, because he should be, not you, the best person to answer the double promotion of Mr. Seilmeyer, approved of the college meeting, meeting uh, last 21st of February. But, uh, Mr. Oettinger, I have some questions to you. 
How long before were you informed that Mr. Selmayr was the only candidate for this post? Too many observers think Mr. Selmayr's double promotion did not respect at least two articles of the Statute of EU Civil Servants. Article 29 requires an internal competition of the vacant post of Deputy Secretary General. Mr. Selmayr only had the grade of Director and he was appointed Deputy Secretary General. Mr. Oettinger, for how long did he hold this post? Article 4 requires the appointing authority and the staff of the European Commission to be informed. This was not the case. So, Mr. Oettinger, was it a fake internal competition? It seems an abuse of power. I welcome the fact that EU Ombudsman is analyzing this affair. And, please, colleagues, these behaviors and abuses of powers are fueling anti-European sentiments all over Europe. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, Mr. Stas. President, ladies and gentlemen, this is a discussion about integrity and uh, rules. You say that all the rules have been complied with, but, but if you look at the dossier, you can see that it stinks to high heavens. First of all, the this procedure ran very quickly. 31st of January was when the vacancy was announced. External evaluations, 15th of February, 16th of February, discussion with the advisory committee, uh, interview with Minister Juncker on the 21st, and uh, appointment uh, to the Post Secretary General on the 21st. That's a world record. And uh, the uh, the vacancy wasn't dealt with properly. We didn't have a number of applicants. It wasn't a transparent procedure. And the appointment to the Secretary General on the 21st of February was not notified. It was not noted in minutes anywhere. It was just one document for the 28th Commission. It was a bit of a deus ex machina procedure. This needs to be looked into, and it will be looked into by the Budgetary Control Committee. Don't treat us like children. We don't expect high officials to act in this rushed fashion and in such a dishonest way. Thank you, President. Colleagues, we're here discussing a shady bureaucrat, Mr. Selmayr, that no European citizen knows. Why not? Because Mr. Selmayr is now sitting on one of the uh, main commission thrones. The problem is that we know that who, uh, he is now head of uh, Juncker's cabinet and whose interests he's defending. Now, I'm not questioning the formal um, correctness of how he was nominated, but the political role of the Commission and its president, and also the e role that ethics has to play in public life. I ask myself and you, colleagues, are the president of the Commission and commissioners only um, technical um, appointments without any responsibilities, or are they politicians? If they are politicians, as Mr. Juncker has said many times here, then how can they respond to citizens who haven't elected them but who are subject to their decisions? Politicians, particularly those leading institutions, have to act with integrity, discipline, honour, and always act in a way which is ethically irreproachable. And they shouldn't just do this but have to appear to do this. There can be no, doubt, no doubts as to their actions. Where are ethics and transparency here? What mechanisms uh, for political sanctions can we enact um, when faced with this kind of behaviour? Neither P Commissioner uh, President Juncker nor the Commissioner have been directed, di directly elected by citizens or can be subject to individual no-confidence motions. The vote recently in Italy has shown that citizens don't want this Europe anymore, uh, closed off in its fortress of lobbyists, um, interests, German interests. Uh, we, there is a strong wind of change blowing in Europe, and you can no longer ignore it. Thank you very much.
Mr. Nicolabay. Oui, la nomination de Monsieur. Yes, the appointment of Mr. Zellmeyer as Secretary General of the European Commission is outrageous. It is outrageous because this person close to Mrs. Merkel just adds to the long list of Germans abusively appointed in key posts in the European institutions. It's scandalous because this appointment, which is totally arbitrary, disregards all the recruitment rules in place in the institution and is a win of the bureaucratic superstructure over the political uh, beings that we are with the responsibilities that we have. The European Union is forever giving lessons to the whole world and there the former Prime Minister of a tax haven wants to put his uh, Chief of Staff at the head of the administration of the European Executive. And Mr Juncker, instead of coming to explain, sends Mrs Oettinger, the German Commissioner, also chosen by Mrs Merkel. So what contempt for the Parliament and the citizens we represent. With the same contempt, the bureaucrats that are not elected in the Commission with exorbitant powers allow themselves to challenge decisions that are legal and legitimate taken by democratic governments elected, such as Poland and Hungary. Thank you very much. And now we will have Ingeborg Geisler.